good. <laughs> Commissioner Fowler? Present. Commissioner Scribner? Here. Commissioner Sanders? Here. Commissioner Mello? Here. Commissioner McKibben? Here. Commissioner Morris? Commissioner McGuire? Here. Commissioner Couch? Commissioner Rivera? Now move on to number three. Um, uh, approval of the minutes of the January 23rd, 2019 meeting. I'll make that motion that we approve. Second, Fowler. Okay, uh, motion by McGuire, seconded by Fowler. Cast your votes, please. Oh, I, I voted in the wrong way. <laughs> okay. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, on to number three, um, public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. I see no one uh, wishing to make comments, so we're going to move on to number five. Notice of public hearings. 1744 Northwest Kern Resource Conservation District, Spear of Influence Amendment. The need for an amendment of the Spear of Influence is required prior to the annexation of a portion of the dissolved Rose, Rosedale Rio Bravo Resource Cons Conservation District. Please reference proceeding 1743 for the location and the proposed amendment area. Uh, Mr. Knox? Yes. Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I'm going to uh, do one presentation for 1743 and 1744, and then as usual, I'll bring it back for separate votes on each. This proposal is to annex approximately 36,500 acres into the Northwest Kern Resource Conservation District or an RCD. This includes a sphere of influence amendment that is coterminous with the proposed district boundaries. The proposed area is generally located south of 7th Standard Road, west of Nord Avenue, north of Stockdale Highway, and east of the East Side Canal. Proceeding number 1743 and 1744 are the direct result of the Commission's recent decision to dissolve the inactive Rosedale Rio Bravo Resource Conservation District that had been non-existent except on paper since the 1980s. A couple items that need a little clarification. This report discusses fire and wildlife mitigation. Northwest Kern RCD has never performed either of these, but they have the authority to do so if needs ex exist and funding becomes available. You will find uh, RCDs up in the mountains uh, work on fire much more often than, than the ones that are on the valley, valley floor. A matter more, that is a little more complicated is flood control and erosion control. In the original packet, the current provider of flood and erosion control is listed as the County of Kern, and those services would now be provided by Northwest Kern Resource Conservation District. The way our template reads, it could be construed that the county has had responsibility, and that responsibility is now turned over to the Resource Conservation District. The Resource Conservation District has taken issue with this description, 
Although I have not heard directly from the county, I would likely, it would be likely that they would not approve of this dis description either. Um, it's not our intent here to establish resp responsibility or precedent over who's in, in control of, of floodwaters. I'd, I'd like to give an example. Um, over a decade ago, uh, Pozo Creek flooded over and it, I was given the job of trying to figure out who's responsible for flood control on P Pozo Creek. I talked to a lot of people and I got a lot of different answers, uh, depending on who you talk to. But one thing did become clear, nobody wanted to touch it lest they take responsibility and therefore liability for the creek, which is the real issue, is the liability. To the point, Northwest Kern has authority to do flood and erosion control projects within the area, but do so only within a limited scope that shields their potential from liability. And I really can't blame them for that. With this annexation, there is no tax increase. Uh, our CDs do not get a portion of property tax. It's consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plan, or specific plan. There is no ag land conversion as there is no change in land use with the annexation to an RCD. There are disadvantaged unincorporated communities both within the district boundaries and outside. None are specifically carved out in this project. If anything, we carved out high income areas of Rosedale east of Nord Road, Nord Road that were originally in Rosedale Rio Bravo RCD. This conforms to the assessor's parcels. There's no functional overlap. This, uh, an RCD does not supply a municipal service, therefore a municipal service review is not uh, required. Um, there is no indemnification agreement because LAFCO is a lead agency on this. Um, CEQA is met by notice of exemption and affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified and no comments were provided. Uh, there is not 100% land landowner consent. We didn't even bother trying. Um, we knew we weren't, we weren't gonna get there, so there's gonna need to be a protest hearing. So this time I would recommend adopting the environmental document prepared by the commission, approve the spirit of influence amendment number 1744 to be contemporaneous with the district boundary, and then in a separate vote, Adopt an environmental document prepared by the commission, approve annexation number 1743 to the Northwest Kern Resource Conservation, and do not waive notice hearing and protest hearing. Mr. Chairman. Uh, we do have representatives from Northwest Kern Resource Conservation District here if you have any questions, if the, if, uh, the commission has any questions about this. Does anybody like to speak at this time on the issue before the board? If not, uh, do I have a motion? I'll move approval. Second. Please cast your votes. And that was on 1744? Yes. 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 So we'll need a second vote on the annexation 1743. Move approval on 1743. Second. Motion by Karen, uh, second by Couch. Um, We'll now move on to 1745. Um, you, you would need to take the vote. Pardon? You need to take the oh, vote. Oh, we need to take a vote. I'm sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Motion carried. Oh. You need media. Motion approved all eyes okay. for item 5A. We're now moving on to 5C. Before we do, did we actually have a vote on, we yeah. on A? We, we need to have a vote on 1744. Oh, I thought we, we did vote on it, didn't we? 1744? Mm -hmm. That was the first motion that we voted on. 
Yeah. Then we made a second motion and we have to vote on it. That one didn't register. Yeah. yeah. The vote was up to the first one. Okay. Okay. So we need a second vote. For 1744? 43. 43. Okay. okay. Please cast your votes for 1743. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, we're now on to um, 5C, uh, 1745 Spear of Influence, five-year questionnaire review. Uh, Button Willow Recreation and Parks District in your current community services district. Um, GC 56425A, in order to carry out its proposal, purposes and responsibilities for planning and shaping the logical and orderly development and coordination of local governmental agencies subject to the jurisdiction of commission to advantageously provide for the present and future needs of the county and its communities. The commission shall develop and determine the sphere of influence of each city and each special district as defined in section 56036 within the county and enact policies designed to promote the logistic, logical and orderly development of areas within the sphere. GC 56425G on or before January 1st, 20, 28, 2008 and every five years thereafter, the commission shall as necessary review and update each sphere of influence. Mr. Knox. Yes. Every five years, we are to review and update the sphere of influence for each uh, special district and city. We are slowly getting to the end of the special districts and have several cities left to go. It's only taken us two years to get to, get to here. Uh, neither Button Willow Rec and Park nor Inyo Kern CSD indicates they'll request a sphere change in the next five years. So it's my recommendation to accept the sphere of influence reviews for Button Willow Recreation and Park District and Inyo Kern Community Services District. We need a vote on that. Do I have a motion? No. Motion, Fowler. Second, McGuire. Please cast your votes. <coughs> motion approved, all ayes. We're now on to uh, 5D, and uh, Mr. Knox informed me that he's going to do 5D and 6A and 6B in one it, presentation. That's correct, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I am, I'm the attorney for that uh, applicant, and so I'm going to recuse myself. Thank you. Yes. So, okay. okay um, 5D. Uh, 1738 City of McFarland Municipal Service Review Update. Municipal Service Review Update of the City of McFarland Current Sphere of Influence Boundary in order to prepare and to update spheres of influence in accordance with Section 56425, the Commission shall conduct a service review of the municipal services provided in the county or other ap appropriate area designated by the Commission. Mr. Knox. Yes. Commission, before you are two annexations, number 15 and number 16, to the City of McFarland, along with a Municipal Service Review. We have been working on these applications since last May and were in discussions with the City several months before the applications were filed. Let me start with the MSR. We do not, we do not typically ask for a Municipal Service Review when an annexation happens inside a current sphere. To put it politely, the City of McFarland has some financial challenges. I've outlined these challenges in the report. I've outlined the, these challenges in the, the report and recommendation to ensure the city can provide services to these new areas for the foreseeable future. I requested the city perform a municipal service review. The municipal service review outlines the city's financial issues, but also shows a city that is working to expand and improve their infrastructure. The building of an arsenic plant along with expansion of their sewer farm 
show a city that is dedicated to providing, providing services necessary for the health and safety of the community. The city is also working on projects to bring more growth and tax revenue over the long haul. For annexation 1726, this is number 15. On May 7, 2018, the city of McFarland submitted annexation number 15 to Kern Lafco. The proposal to annex is to annex approximately 58.31 acres of land, including in one residence, including one residence into the city of McFarland. The proposal proposed area is located on the northwest corner of Garzoli Avenue and Taylor Avenue. The area is within the city's sphere of influence. It has been planned for in the city's general plan. The area is zoned A agricultural and the county it has been pre-zoned residential R1 by the city of McFarland. A new tax agreement uh, was approved by this, both the city and the county that covers all annexations within the city's current sphere of influence. This project is consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plans or specific plans. There is ag land conversion with this project. Although there are no commercially crops currently being grown on the property and haven't been for some time, the property is adjacent to property already developed in the city and is in the path of, of growth. Uh, there are no disadvantaged unincorporated communities near McFarland, but McFarland itself is a disadvantaged community. Disadvantaged incorporated community, not unincorporated. Uh, this con this pr uh, annexation conforms to assessor's parcels. There is no functional overlap. Uh, the city uh, provided a water supply assessment. Uh, it is included with this application. Uh, how much additional water will be used is unknown at this time. The water usage will be analyzed when the parcels are developed. Uh, the project does not specifically increase housing but the pre-zoning as residential shows that will likely increase housing for the community. Uh, it is consistent with uh, commission policies. Uh, they have signed an identification agreement and affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified and no comments were provided. The proposal has 100% landowner consent. I will go ahead and do uh, seven, uh, uh, annexation 1726, number 15, uh, sorry, 1734, annexation, annexation 16. On May 7, 2018, the city of McFarland submitted annexation number 16 to Kern Lafco. This proposal is to annex approximately 77 acres of land on five parcels, including one residence into the city of McFarland. Their proposed area is located on the southwest corner of Garzoli Avenue and Elmo Highway. The area is within the city's sphere of influence has been planned for in the city's general plan. The area is zoned agri A agricultural and residential uh, 2.5 acres in the county and has been pre-zoned residential R1 by the city of McFarland. As with the other annexation, uh, there is a tax agreement with the county. It's consistent with general plans. There is ag land conversion, but not, I, for a portion of this project. Um, not all properties are considered prime agricultural land. There are no commercial crops currently being grown on the parcels. Trees at the end of their productive life cycle have recently been pulled from several of the properties. The properties are adjacent to proposed a property already developed and in the city, and it's in the uh, path of growth. Uh, there is no disadvantage on incorporated community nearby conforms to assessor's parcels, there's no functional overlap, and they have provided a, a water supply assessment. Uh, does not specifically increase housing, but again, this is a residential, gonna be zoned residential, so that's likely gonna happen in the future. It's com consistent with commission policies, and they have signed an indemnification agreement. Affected and overlapping agencies and, and districts were notified and no comments provided. As with all three of these, the process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including not notices to affected agencies and any notices to uh, publications required by law. Uh, this proposal has 100% landowner consent. And the applicant has requested that notice, hearing, and protest hearing be waived as allowed by government section code 56663. So with the Municipal Service Review, I uh, recommend accepting the Municipal Service re Review as written. 
and then we can I can make if you like I'd make my recommendation on the other two or would you like to do this individually mr. chairman uh, let's do it individually we'll uh, okay vote now on uh, uh, the municipal service review uh, 1738 municipal service review uh, do I have a motion motion second second please Fowler. Cash, uh, uh, First by couch, second by Fowler. Uh, please cast your votes, please. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay. We're now going to uh, take a vote on 1726, City of McFarland Annexation Number 15. Yes, my recommendation is to consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant waive notice, hearing, and protest hearing, and approve annexation 1726 with conditions set by the executive officer. Move approval. Second. Second. Please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Did you catch the first and the second on that? I didn't, so thank you. <laughs> um, now, uh, 1734 City of McFarland, annexation number 16. Yes, it's my, it's my recommendation to consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant. We have notice hearing and protest hearing and approve annexation number 1734 with conditions set by the executive officer. I'll move approval. Second. And cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay. <coughs> okay, we're on to number seven, commission items. Mr. Knox, do you have any items? I believe you do. I do. We have a plaque here for our uh, <coughs> past uh, Commissioner Mello. We are. Uh, present this uh, plaque to you for your services for 2018. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, f no further uh, business under commission items. We're on to number eight, general business. Uh, a, approval of the claim list number 19-02. Motion. Move. Motion. Second, Fowler. Uh, motion by Mello, a second by Flower. Uh, place your votes, please. Motion approved, all ayes. Number B. Certificate of uh, Sufficiency, Weldon Regional Water District. Mr. Knox. Yeah, the committee to form Weldon Regional Water District has submitted enough verified signatures to move forward with the creation of a new water district. Attached to your agenda is a certificate of sufficiency that tells everyone that the committee is now ready to move to the next step. That would be to submit an application, maps, CEQA documents, and everything needed to bring this application before the commission. I expect to have this before the commission in the next few months. And my recommendation is to receive and file. Uh, no further action needed on it at this time. No. Uh, number C, 2017-2018 budget cycle audit report. Yes. Mr. Knox. This year's audit was conducted by the accounting firm of Brown Armstrong after several years with another firm in town. The commission asked for a fresh look at the financials of the commission. I am happy to report that we received much of the same old results. A clean bill of health and no recommendations for improvements. I would like to point out a couple of items that may look a little confusing when going over the audit results. The first is regarding the modification of revenues. If you remember, there was an overestimate, overestimate of the assessment performed by the county over the last two years. Upon the commission's suggestion, the money was returned to the county, cities, and special districts, all within this last budget year. Second is the unfunded pension liability. Even though we pay significantly into CalPERS, for our portion of the estimated shortfall, the number continues to rise. 
And we are required by law to report this on our financial statements, even though it's technically not ours, it's CalPERS. <coughs> and with that, a uh, Rosalba Flores from Brown Armstrong, uh, the accounting firm is here and would like to say a word or two. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Rosalba Flores and I'm a partner with Brown Armstrong and I'm very happy to be here. Um, I just, first of all, wanted to uh, let you know that I'm here to answer any questions. Uh, this is the first year that we conducted our audit. Uh, we were very pleased with uh, the information that we were provided from management. Um, beforehand, I just wanna apologize. I know the report was uh, submitted a little later than normal, and that was basically just uh, because I had a few medical uh, emergencies that, uh, that uh, I, I was put a uh, couple of times on uh, no travel and a few other restrictions, so I apologize for that. Um, every year that we conduct our audit, we always meet our deadlines, so I just wanted to let you know that there were significant delays because of that, but I'm here today and I'm here to answer any questions if you have any questions for me on the financial statements. Any questions? Thank you, I am. <laughs> hey, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, and, and with that, my recommendation is to receive and file. Okay. So moved. Uh, number 8D, Ar City of Arvin extension request 1737 and 1740. Yes, the City of Arvin had several items on the January agenda. At, at the time, they asked for additional time before the commission hears their items. The city is making progress in their negotiation with the county and providing further documentation and reports to justify their sphere amendment. It's going to take a little more time and they have asked for extension until a the April meeting. It is my recommendation to grant the city of Marvin extension until April. I need a vote on this. Move approval. Second. All in favor? Cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, 8C, um, executive officer uh, in miscellaneous items. Mr. Knox. Couple things for today. Um, one is last Friday was a deadline for legislation in Sacramento. That didn't give us enough time to put it on this agenda, but it will be on next. And I'm sure there'll be several things that are LAFCO related uh, that the state legislature wants to do to us. Um, we do have an upcoming vacancy in the public member position. Uh, we will be putting out a notice probably here at the end of the week in local papers and out to interested parties about um, nominations for that seat, the alternate, and we also have a open alternate seat for the other public member. So hopefully we get three willing uh, applicants uh, or nominees for that position. So that's coming up. Uh, next, next meeting, I will also be bringing you the initial budget for the 2019-2020 budget year. How did we get to 2020? That's just crazy. But that's coming, so i uh, got to be ready for that. Uh, also, the SDRMA, who handles our insurance, uh, you as the commission, one of you would be eligible to be on their board if you would like to. Uh, those um, elections are coming up soon. If so, if you're interested, contact me. I have the information on that. Also on your desk tonight is uh, the paperwork for your statement of econ economic interest. Please fill that out and return it to us before April 1st. Uh, you can send it back to us or bring it to us at the next meeting. And with that, our next meeting is Wednesday, March 27th, 2019. And that's the end of my, my comments. Okay, if no further discussion. Uh, we're on to number nine. We're now in closed session. You're going into closed session. Hmm? You're, you're now going into closed session. We're now going into closed session. Yes. Okay, now we're now back in uh, open session. Um, and our attorney has, uh,
Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, action was taken in closed session. A motion was made by Commissioners uh, Scrivener and Couch to um, approve a 4% pay increase for the executive officer and it was adopted unanimously. Thank you. Uh, no further uh, comment on this. No. Um, we are now adjourned.